Hello, everybody. I've had a uh, debate with uh, a so-called ex-Muslim, and uh, unfortunately, he was absolutely uneducated about everything. I'm saying this because uh, he was, um, because of his lack of education, he called uh, the perfect man in the history of mankind, the love of God, he called him uh, a devil. And uh, I'm uh, going to put uh, all evidences that uh, he was rejecting because of his lack of knowledge. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, certain things because he didn't let me talk because he just was talking, you know. Point well, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, there could be human greed behind it. There could be human desires no, behind no, it. Those are the things. Yes, They're not burying them alive. They're not burying them alive. I, I don't know about that. All of his knowledge is based on, I don't know, probably, maybe, and his uh, decision is based, of, uh, based on nothing, on empty facts. Hi guys, this is Harris Sultan, the ex-Muslim atheist, and welcome to another episode of Sultan's House of Sin. So tell me under what context hands and feet of people or, or the enemy combatants should be cut off. How do you refute my reason when I say it's a human desire that makes you do it? You say okay. a greed okay. is a human desire. Okay. Uh, now, Abrahamic religion says that the source of all this problem is one, Satan. Okay? You have heard about that. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so, so that... All right. So... I've got a gentleman here. I think he's, um, I'm, I'm not very familiar with his work, but uh, I think he's made a documentary or something or a film. And um, I, I saw some of his Facebook posts. So he, he doesn't like Bukhari. So I'm not familiar with his work at all. So I don't know which angle he's going to come from. So I'm just going to take him on. His name is Mushtaba. Mushtaba G, how are you? Hi. Are you? So very, very good. So I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, yeah, anyway, so um, I was just talking about you, who you are. I don't really know much about you, but I know you've made a documentary film or something and um, uh, looking, at, looking at your posts, it seems like you, you like to do what we like to do, make fun of Bukhari. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. Like what, 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 what background do you come from and what part of Islam? do you feel is the right one? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm a former apostate, as I, uh, if you can say that. And uh, at the age of 25, I started to think if uh, God exists or doesn't exist. And then I came to this conclusion that he doesn't exist. And uh, obviously, it was lack of knowledge, because later, when I got better knowledge, I realized that I was wrong. And uh, I found out that Islam is uh, the solution to all our problems, so I converted to Islam. And for me, is uh, uh, doesn't matter that if God exists or doesn't exist. For me, it doesn't matter if Muhammad was his prophet or he wasn't his prophet. For me, the most important is the the message that he has left, and how this Almighty God can guide us out of the jungle we are living in and save, save us from our problems we are facing on this planet. So obviously, um, I don't make fun of Bukhari, but uh, I believe that uh, many of his uh, hadiths are uh, fabricated because they are not in line with the uh, with Quran. And uh, I've asked many of uh, Bukhari believers to have a debate with me, but uh, unfortunately they reject because they know that they are, most of them say, I'm not a scholar, and they know that they are wrong themselves. And, uh, anyway, so I uh, disagree with many of his uh, hadiths. Uh, that's not I'm making fun of him, I just, uh, I don't believe that he, uh, he, I don't believe that all of his um, hadiths are, um, Authentic. I, there must be some authentic hadith, but okay. So, uh, so were you actually born a Muslim? Were you born a Muslim? Uh, 
Sorry, um, I cannot say that I was born a Muslim. What I mean to say, obviously, no one is born a Muslim. Everyone's born an atheist, clean slate. But uh, what, what I meant to ask was, were your parents Muslim? <clears throat> yes, yes, but uh, something happened. Anyway, uh, I don't believe that um, you can be born to a, to a belief. Okay? No, you're born into a religion. It depends on your yeah, family, I, obviously. I, I was born to a Muslim family, okay? Not to a religion. You cannot b be born to a way of life. You have to choose it. That's the, the no, not really, because a five-year-old child, no, because five-year-old child doesn't decide that whether he's going to go to school or not. His parents set that standard for him, just like that. Their parents set the religion for them as well. So yes, yeah, so so that's what we mean when we say you're born into something. Um, yeah. So so you were born in in a Muslim family. You were a Muslim. And then at 25 years of age, you left Islam and then you found Islam. So, you know, what's interesting for me whenever someone says that first part that I always notice is that they always find the religion of they were born into. They always find that one to be true out of thousand others. So, you know, OK, um, all right, I'll ignore that part. But then secondly, what's more interesting to me is that what exactly did they find that convinced them that, oh, that's it. That's what I didn't, uh, the, all these atheists don't see. I found that, therefore I'm a Muslim again. So tell me a little bit about that. What was, what was it that yes. you found that yes. you said, okay, this is it? Yes, uh, as I said that uh, <clears throat> you are also <clears throat> wrong and m many people are wrong uh, about religion and God. For me, if God cannot save us from our problems, if he cannot guide us to a better world, then is not worth to worship him or follow him. So I better follow um, uh, a prime minister or a politician uh, to to get rid of our problems. But I found that Islam has the solution to every single problem we are facing on this planet. Okay, and really? uh, that's why um, that's why I I converted to Islam. So that's uh, the most important thing. That so did you did you read Bibles? Did you read all the versions of the Bible? No, no, I haven't read the Bible all the way, but uh, I know a little bit of them. And so I how do you know? How do you know the message of Bible is not the solution to all the problems? Yeah, because uh, uh, you know everything that is in Quran, okay, uh, shows that it is a very, very deep uh, uh, discussion. Okay, first of all, you have to know um, uh, what is the source of our problems. Okay. No, 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 no. That's not the answer to my question. I'm asking you. So it's a, it's a very simple, straightforward question. Okay. I get it that you understand the Quran. You've read Quran cover to cover and you've understood every single word. Okay. But I'm saying, how do you, and you make a claim, oh, there it is. All the problems, uh, sol solution of the world's problem are in that book, but you haven't even read Bible. I haven't even started about Hindu literature. Have you read yes. the Gita's, the Bhagavad Gita's? Have you read them? Have you studied the Aboriginal culture? Have you studied the Latin American culture? So yes. my, my point, the point I'm arriving at is, okay, there's a strong reason for all the skeptics to believe that you had the emotional connection with Islam because you were born into it. And that's why you just found that religion to be the true one. No, uh, the thing is that I, the movie I made also, uh, if you had watched it, uh, it is about uh, going around and learn about different religion, okay? And uh, at the end, I found, uh, you know, I, in reality, when I f realized, I learned a little bit about uh, Hinduism, I realized that God exists, okay? Because for me, uh, Hinduism was uh, mostly imagination of people. And uh, Hinduism, and then uh, Mayans religion, and paganism, in reality, in, uh, in whole. They were uh, imagination of people because it doesn't match science at all. But the Abrahamic religion, they match science in many ways, especially Quran. Well, there, there are a lot, there's a lot of Hindu texts. There's a lot of um, uh, Hindus who actually show a lot of uh, scientific verses from Gita's as well. Can you please... Uh, from Rig Veda's as well. Can you point well, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to talk about because I, I I'm not a Hindu. My point is, my point is, uh, and I can talk, I can talk about... You. No, no, no. Let me well, tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing about science, science okay? <clears throat> science says that there is an end to this world, 
okay? There is two different uh, theory how it ends, okay? But there is an end to this world. And the Abrahamic religion says that there is an end to this world, okay? There's a, end, there's a judgment there in pretty much a lot of, a lot of cultures. Judgment at no. the end of the world is in a lot of cultures. No, no, but uh, uh, there is an end to this world and Hinduism believe in reincarnation. And when you ask them how long, they say forever. There is no end for reincarnation. Okay. Can, there, are, are there, there, there are some Hindus. Can, can anyone confirm that? Because I know there's reincarnation, but it doesn't mean that, um, that they don't believe in the end of the world. There, there would be an end of this world. And when you talk about the end, so let, let's not go to Hinduism because they said, I'm not an expert in that, but let's just stick to Islam. So okay. when you say Islam, so, so you haven't studied Bible for, for, uh, just, just for the record, but you have found that Islam has all the solution. Now, I, I want to understand when you interpret Quran, what are your other sources? Because you obviously don't believe in Bukhari. Do you believe in Sahih Muslim? Do you believe in no, Tirmidhi? Do you, I mean, okay, so you don't believe in Hadith. So, how, so, no, so, so, so you just read the Quran itself and then you make the meaning out of it. No, no, no. Uh, I say I believe in Hadith, okay? But I don't believe uh, in most of uh, their Hadiths are um, stories and fabricated, okay? But I believe in Hadiths. Okay, hadith that explain uh, Quran, Quranic rules. Okay, for example, uh, hadith that says that uh, uh, apostate must be killed. Okay, uh, by Bukhari. That hadith doesn't match Quran because Quran says that their judgment is by Allah, not by people. People have no right to judge uh, or punish anybody. Uh, especially uh, apostate or Bukhari says that uh, uh, adulterer must be killed, uh, stoned to death. Okay, but Quran doesn't say that at all. So it goes to con contradiction to Quran. That's why you have to reject such a hadiths, fabricated hadiths, because Bukhari even uh, suggests that Quran is incomplete because he says in hadith that. Uh, these verses of uh, stoning was there, but somehow didn't come in the in Quran, and then yeah, because the goat ate it. You you have heard that uh, he says that Umar uh, says that oh, I'm afraid that later people forget it, you know, because it is not in Quran, but it was there, you know. So this is uh, it makes uh, Quran incomplete according to 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 Bukhari. Yes, yes, it is incomplete. So. Um, because it was narrated afterwards and how uh, basically your criterion is if it doesn't make sense, you don't like it, you throw it away. So, okay, fair enough. Just, I, I love to throw this one particular verse to a lot of people um, because people who like to interpret it their own way. It says that indeed the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive upon earth to cause corruption is none but that they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite ends or that they be exiled from the land. This is from... This is for them a disgrace in this world and for them in the hereafter and a great punishment. So tell me under what context hands and feet of people or, or the enemy combatants should be cut off. Okay. This is uh, <clears throat> obviously in the war, uh, you, uh, there is a propaganda as well. So this was a propaganda war and this was just <clears throat> during war, during battle and never... So never happened okay <clears throat> you know when so so you cut war, so so you cut off so so in a war you you cut off hands and feet at opposite end this is not in a combat yes this, listen, this, to it me. Doesn't, listen to no, me. no no hang on hang on hang on no 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 <laughs> you listen to me first so let me let me make my point first when you when you cut off hands and feet at opposite ends you're actually doing that on purpose you're, you're actually torturing someone you're putting them down and then doing it in a war yes hands and feet get cut off you you hit someone you put a knife and whatever that happens we understand that but cutting them at opposite ends hands and feet so right hand left foot left hand right foot that's what it means how do you do that in the actual war that when you're actually fighting with someone and then you say okay let's do it there you go I mean, this is a fight. In the fight, you have sword, and he said that how to to fight them. Okay, listen to me. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, I think you have to be in that situation. Okay, <clears throat> in the situation situation of war. Uh, let's say, uh, as I said, let's say uh, that Muhammad, uh, God comes 
here now and tell you that I exist and Muhammad is my my prophet, okay? Uh, will you follow if God show you all miracles, okay? Will you follow Islam? Oh yeah, if it, if it make, if it, if it makes sense, yes, I I, I would you know, I would say okay. If why, it, if should, it, if it, why should you do that? Tell me. Why should you follow a God that cannot save you from all these problems you are facing on this planet? Let me see, <clears throat> uh, Brother Harris. Let's put uh, Islam beside. Okay, let's put all religion beside and leave them. Okay, what are you gonna do with prostitution, drugs, war? Uh, corruption, all these problems that exist on this planet. Can you please tell me where is the source of all these problems? They come from human desires and human behaviors and that result in problems. We know that. That's why we make, we debate about these things. We make laws and yes. laws are the only thing that actually stop problems. Now, historically, if you look at our human history, we are in a far, we're in a better place than we've ever been. Some people argue that, that maybe before the farming revolution, Humans, yes, lived a shorter amount of time and uh, there were more leisure than there was work. But then when the work was really hard, so you have to go and be a hunter gatherer and you have to you, you could get killed uh, hunting big game. But uh, but we, we don't have any exclusive data for it. But especially after farming, when people started living in cities and the larger groups, human life has been miserable for at least 10, 15,000 or at least since the end of the last ice age. So. Now we're living better. We have more food. 50% uh, of the world's population, the, the poverty has been reduced to 50% when it has been 99% throughout human history, especially recorded history. And we're living better. Our lives are better because we've had this thing called government. We've had this thing called debates. And then we talk about it in the scientific revolution. So hum these, these are natural problems. Lions are still getting killed on the African savanna with by each other the deers are getting killed because they don't have this intellectual revolution yet they they don't sit down and then talk okay this is our problem let's work out a solution so that's what humans do and that's what we've done historically and it's working and it's going to keep working we have reduced poverty as i said we're reducing diseases we're in, increasing human lifespan and we're living in better houses we're more comfortable life is life is better than what it ha always has been not because of religions, but because of human intellect, human intuition. That's what made it better. And it will keep going. Okay. Uh, but um, there is a, you know, Mr. Harris, uh, there is a source for every single problem we are facing on this planet. And uh, as long as we don't deal with that source, okay, we will always have this problem. Okay. So, <clears throat> Uh, tell me, prostitution, drugs, and then uh, corruption, war, all these problems, from where comes all these problems? What well, I've, I've, already, I've already said it. It's a, it, it because it's human. It's a, these are human-made problems. It's, there could be human greed behind it. There could be human desires no, no, behind no. it. Those are the things. Yes, Those are the things are, that cause Mr. Harris, Mr. Harris, you are living in a in 21st century, okay? So you have to be more educated and that that it could, you know, you have to know, you have to know the real no, source. I know the real source. I know the real source. Can you tell Human. me the real source? No, 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 I, uh, no, because you asked me multiple questions. That's what I'm saying. For different things, there are different reasons. For, it, for prostitution, for instance, it could be a financial problem that a woman becomes a prostitute. Or maybe she wants a better lifestyle because in countries like Australia, prostitution is legal and it's highly regulated. And women are free. If they want to be prostitutes, they can be free. Now, there's a market for it. There's a desire in men. So when I say desires, so there's a desire in a man that he wants to have it's just a sexual relationship with someone and hence there's prostitution. I don't even view prostitution as a bad thing. Okay, now you want to talk about drugs. Okay, so that's also because of human desire. There's a there's a human mind that, that requires something and they find something and they find something addictive. And those things have always existed, like in a more primitive form, like uh, gambling is addictive, alcohol can be addictive for certain, certain people. So human desires are behind all of these things. These are human-made problems and they will be solved by human intellect. Okay, uh, now Abrahamic religion says that the source of all this problem is one, Satan. Okay, you have heard about that. <laughs> right, so, yeah. so, so that, so, now, let's, um, okay. now let me tell you. Okay, let me tell you. Now, who is the Satan? Okay, uh, 
who is a real Satan. Uh, why a woman sell her body? Because she wants to get money. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Possibly. Why? Or maybe maybe she likes the fact that she can she can get laid and she can also get paid. Okay, no, let me see. The, in, in general, uh, why farmers of Afghanistan, they produce 90% of the total uh, opium of the world because they can sell it more. Am I, am I right? Weak, weak law and order. order. Weak, they sell, weak they law and order. Sorry? Weak law and order. They sell opium, uh, a kilo opium, hundreds of dollars when they cannot sell a kilo of uh, potatoes or tomatoes for weak. 10 cents. Yeah, okay. but weak, no, no, but that's because of weak law and order. So, I mean, if I can't earn an honest living, that doesn't mean that I should go out and start stealing because, hey, look, I tried, but I only work $15 an hour. That's not enough, but I can rob that old woman and I can get thousand bucks for the day. So that's not an excuse that because they can't do that, that's why, and that's been caused by Satan. These are no. human desires. These are human problems caused no, no, by no. human desires. How do you prove that a Satan is making you do it? How do you prove it? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Harris, let me explain for you. I said that Satan is the source, but I'm going to locate who is the Satan for you, okay? And they do it because they can sell it much more expensive, okay? They, I mean, they can sell uh, You drugs. see, this is a circular logic. I mean, we've heard these kind of argument about the Satan. So how do we make a jump that Satan is the one who's making you do it? I've given you a reason. How, how do okay, you feel my okay. reason? Okay. How do you refute my reason when I say it's a human desire that makes you do it? Is it okay. a greed okay. is a human desire? Yeah, let me tell you one thing. Okay, let me explain for you in this way. Mr. Harris, uh, imagine that um, you are uh, a grocery keeper, okay? And I'm hungry. I come to your store and steal some food, okay? Uh, Abrahamic religion says that uh, Satan fooled me, okay? That's what Abrahamic religion says. Now imagine, now imagine that you have this grocery, you, that you are working in a grocery, in a world where grocery doesn't belong to you, money doesn't exist, okay? And I come to your grocery, the grocery that you're working, I take whatever I want and I say, thank you, brother Harris, God bless you, and I go, okay? Was there any human desire or anything in the second picture in the first picture, because money existed, okay, I came and stole because I needed, okay. In the in a world where you can, in a world where you can uh, gather billions of dollars, Mr. Harris, okay, and you can sell drugs to become rich, you can sell. Yeah, but there was a human desire. But there was a human desire yeah. in both Listen cases. No, no, but they were, you asked me a question. You asked me yes, a question. Let me answer that. Yes. Let me you, okay. But I think I, you've I, already I, given an answer. You asked me a yeah. question, but you've given yourself an answer. I'm saying the human desire in both of these things because human body requires food. That's a human desire. It's a human need. All right. All right. Let me answer you. Mr. Harris, if you cannot sell the drug, why you have to, which desire make you to sell, to produce the drug? Let's say there isn't money. No money, at all. money. Let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Mr. Harris, if somebody go and rob a bank, okay? If bank doesn't exist, how can you rob a bank? Yeah, I know that's that fine. That's the standard we have created that we have monetary system. We no. have a monetary system to exchange, to, to, to make trade better. We can't go back to bartering. Bartering would be even worse. But then in that case, people will be stealing other things because you. As, this, is, this is the world that we, we live in that, okay, Forget about the money if there's no bank, okay. But then there's a hunter-gatherer and then there's a tribe where we just go back to a hunter-gatherer state and we're running around jung in jungles or savannas. And then your tribe lives in the east. My tribe lives um, in uh, 10 kilometers west of you. And there's a herd of gazelles that we both want to hunt. Now, you said that's yours. I, my tribe says that's mine. But we fight over it. So what's that? It's the desire that actually makes us do it because it's the food that we wanted. So in the current world, people will rob a bank because that's the desire. With that money, they can they can fulfill the rest of their desires. Food, house, shelter, luxuries, private planes, who knows? So it's a desire. It's yes. perfectly natural. And we know it. Every other animal is doing that. When a lion hunts an impala or a gazelle or a wildebeest, it is, it's, a, it's a desire of its body to feed itself. Okay. Now, you're talking about the past, okay? We are talking, I'm talking about it. No, no, I've talked about both. I've talked about both. I've talked about past and yes. present. It's yes. the same thing. Yes, I say that uh, 
today, okay, today our problem is all because of the system, okay? We call it capitalism. That's it's better than the most. Okay, now let me tell you, Mr. Mr. Harris, for you it's better maybe uh, because you have a life, but for billions of people who, have, who are living on one dollar a day, it's a hell, okay? 50%. We reduced the world's poverty down to 50%. Never happened in the history of mankind before. Okay. 50%. Let me see. Do you know how many percent of the world population own uh, half, of, half of the total capital of the planet? How many percent? It doesn't matter. I think it's 98% or something. But, but that oh, doesn't no. matter. Not everyone wants to be a millionaire. Not, not everyone can be a billionaire. My point is poverty has been reduced to 50%. Throughout human history, it's been 99%. Only the select few aristocrats, the rich, influential people, have had what we define poverty as. They lived above it. So we define poverty. Yes, you can call it $2 or $3 a day, I think, whatever, whatever the poverty definition today is. Whatever that is. Okay, in that time frame, at least they can feed themselves. Feed. Okay, they can't buy a Mercedes, but they could feed themselves. Now, that's, again, now the other 50% is worse. I, I get it. Now, they can't even feed themselves. They can't get more than once one food but i'm talking about the this is better in entire human history it's never been like this before so yes. when you say oh my god gave us the quran has a solution to all the problem quran is just a vague book it's got nothing special in it it's got absolutely okay. nothing special and by the way you still haven't told me that where, where what what exactly where did you find god that all the atheists were like oh shit, they didn't get it but you found it okay uh, uh mr harris uh the thing is that uh, I think it is very uh, new for you to hear uh, what I'm talking about. I've heard this. Uh, I've yes. heard. Trust me, I've yes. heard this yes. argument before. Mr. Harris, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, those uh, rapping cartels, okay, they create war. They sell billions of dollars in weapon, okay, to different countries. All these, every... Uh, you know, you say that, uh, okay, people uh, get some dollars to eat, okay? How can you solve drug problem? Five million people uh, on the planet every year die from cigarettes, okay? Only from smoking cigarettes, five million people. Why? Because some <clears throat> factories, uh, tobacco factories, they want to sell uh, cigarettes. And then... Uh, no, drugs. it's because human we, choice. See, this is yeah. what you religious people never understand that. You people don't understand that there's a thing that we respect in the modern Western world, in the modern yes. liberal Western world. We respect human choices. We, we want to increase as much freedom as possible. That's what we want to do. So it has, its, it has its consequences like, okay, someone can be a prostitute at 18 years of age. Okay, we can have teenage pregnancy. Okay, we can have a drug problem, a gambling problem, alcohol problem. We know that those things can happen, but we also know that we can't, we can't just pick up a gun and tell, hey, you cannot smoke or hey, you cannot do what you want to do with your body. So that's the other end of the spectrum. So no, we have to find a balance and these problems will always remain there. There will always be teenage pregnancies. There will always be some sort of drugs. There was, hang on, I, I, know, I know this is, this is painful for you to, to hear because maybe you haven't understood this side of the argument. I probably never heard of it before. But this is what I'm saying, that you, the solution to the problem is not just putting a gun to someone's head and saying, hey, this is what you do. And I think this is where religious people, you believe that, and this is where you get boxed in because A, you have an assumption that this is a book written by or sent by God, by Allah, not, by, not written by Muhammad, which is quite evident that it's written by Muhammad. Um, it, it has a very, all, the, all the indicators of a seventh century. And then you think that, okay, because it's been sent by Allah, therefore we can live by it and we have the problem. Not even once in the Muslim history, not even in the times of Muhammad, you could create, you could say, hey, this is the perfect society we've created. Because there was there was no scientific advancement in the in, in the time of Muhammad or the first four caliphs, what were they doing? They were just beating people up for stealing, or they were doing whatever they wanted to do. Um, uh, okay, you know, you 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 you, ha you have sex outside of marriage. Oh, they all hell break loose, and the world is coming to an end. No, you know, and, and again, adultery is something that is seen by your God as something bad and evil. Eh? No, that's fine. People wanna people wanna bang each other. They can do all they want. Okay, 
uh, first of all, who said that uh, I told you that uh, you have to put a gun on people's head? Okay, you are absolutely law and order. No, law, I'm law is the law. Yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Harris. Uh, we are living in a jungle with a jungle rule. Okay, you are stronger, you get the most. You are weaker, you get the least. Okay, or you die from hunger. Okay, are you calling yourself a human being or you're calling yourself an animal? Which one you call yourself? Can you please tell me? Yes, we are yes, smart animals, yes. but, but, but our world, no, no, but, but don't, don't misrepresent my views because that's, we're not living in the jungle right no, now. We have laws and orders. There are no laws yes. in the jungle. Okay, so you see yourself as a smart animal. Yes, I know you are a smart animal, but that's, that's the reason that God sent us prophets to guide us to a human world. Okay, so you, you made a jump to the prophets. You made a jump to the prophets when you couldn't count from our points that I said that, okay, we make laws and this is how we improve our society. Jungles don't have laws. We make our laws. There, there are reasons why there are constitutions written, written by humans. There's not a single constitution written by, uh, by a God. And it's one little book that you say, okay, this has got all the solutions to the problem. No, what does Quran say about identity theft? Okay. No, it doesn't. Yeah, let me tell you. Does it say anything about speeding? No. Does Quran say anything about speeding? Uh, Mr. Harris, uh, th these uh, these things has been left to us. That's why in in Islam we have uh, the the system of each um, uh, jihad we call it. Okay, that new things comes and new rules comes. Okay, that's something else. But I I was telling you that. So why do we need God then? We don't need yes. God. If if, no. if if you're if the system that you've also got that okay, we need to debate and we need to uh, talk about new things. So why do we need God? We we know that we can do things. If so, yes. we need to make a school, we, we need to put a new speed limit in the school zone or not. We should uh, whether we should make memes about other people or not. These are new things. We know that everyone. We've been doing that throughout human history. We've been making new laws, and that's what parliamentarians do. So why do we need your God? Okay, uh, as I told you that. Uh, God created us as smart animals in a, that we live in our nature, okay? And in this uh, jungle, the rules is the strongest get the most and the weakest get little or nothing. That's, that's obvious, okay? You cannot deny it. Nobody can deny it. Uh, people have hundreds of billions of dollars and billions of people have just one dollar a day, okay? So this is a jungle and we are living in with the jungle rule. God no, really, no, 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 not really. No, it's not that. Yeah, but you're 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 strawmanning a very complex economic system, and you just because you think that okay, Bill Gates have got hundred billion dollars, and you know I don't know about you, I've I've got I actually I don't know about me, I don't, but you know if if I if I get only ten dollars an hour, then. Uh, then you could say, hey, what well, this is unfair. Why has he got that? And some people do struggle with that, but. But unfortunately, this is the best system that we've got. It's not the perfect system. We tried socialism. We tried communism. We, we, I mean, I am a social democrat myself. I mean, I do believe in universal health care, universal education. I, I do believe in, in, a, in, a, in a minimum minimum income for people. I do believe in those things. Like Australia is a little bit different from America. And I think you live in Sweden, which is a Scandinavian country, one of the good role models for the world. So, so those countries are better than America. I mean, I'm not, in, I'm not a huge fan of American system, but I understand that unfortunately at this time, this is the best we've got, but your God is yes. totally out of the equation. It does, he's, got, he's got no say in that. Quran's got no say in that. It, the, the world is far too complex and complicated for a seventh century book to tell us how to design our world. Okay, that, that's, that's your understanding, Mr. Mr. Harris. My understanding is different, okay? So now uh, I told you that uh, you said that this is the best system we got, okay? For now, yes. For now is the best system. I mean, not the best system. This is the only system. This is our nature system, system of our nature, that the, the, the strongest get the most. And I didn't say it is fair or it is unfair, okay? I'm not talking about fair and unfair. I'm talking about the human and the difference between human and animal. We are a smart animal. Are we going to call us smart animal or we want to call ourselves human? human so what is not, so, yes, so what has yes. your so what has your God offered? So I, I just want to understand, okay. you know, you, yes, you're yes. going a different tangent, but so what has your God in your book 
told us that the humanity mm-hmm. could not could not really work around it like is it the zakat you're talking about what's the yes. what's the muslim society? oh right so zakat so we do charity we do charity mm-hmm. here as well we zakat is actually a tax and yes okay. we do tax that we do tax people and we we run our public hospitals with that we pay our jobless people with that tax money and we build our army with that tax money so yeah everyone's been taxing people for ages i mean this is zakat is not something new listen mr harris you are living in another world uh to me you are living in a different world okay i'm not talking about paying taxes and zakat i'm talking about a world where we don't need to pay taxes and zakat okay in a world that we share everything with each other we love how are you going to do it how are you going to do it we, we sacrifice each other for each other okay i'm talking Where does about Quran say that? World. you are listen to me mr harris you are in a uh, animal world okay and you just you see this world nothing else you don't see anything else you're, yeah okay? but you yeah but what does quran say what does your quran, quran say, say that no yes. there no millionaires allowed in the quran no billionaires allowed in the quran mr harris Quran says, okay, stand five times a day towards Mecca and say, show me the right way. Okay? What is the wrong way? The wrong way is the right way I told you now. Okay? You haven't told me anything. We already know that. No, the wrong way is prostitution. The wrong way is drug. No. The wrong way is pollution. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, corruption. Yeah, pollution is wrong. Way is the, the wrong way is corruption the wrong way is drug prostitution war poverty this is the wrong your profit your profit right. had a lot of wars sorry your, your profit had a lot of wars uh, and uh, to establish the law of allah okay. your profit had a lot of wars okay so uh, what let, let me tell you i'm iranian originally okay mm-hmm. originally iranian we have a dictatorship there killing people we have a lot of war against this dictatorship. Is it wrong to of bring course. down the dictatorship? Ooh, is it wrong? Yes. Yes. It's wrong. Revolution. Re- revolution is wrong. No, it's not wrong. I'm saying bring overthrow them. Yes. So this is uh, you have right always from even United Nations. I know that. Them. I know that. Yes. But we recognize that, yes. sir. Fine. But sir, we recognize. You, we recognize yes. the problems in the world. We don't. Ha- we don't come with the self righteous attitude that yes, you know, we have the perfect. We don't. We're, we're not to make people feel warm and fuzzy. We're not making beautiful statements like oh, throw away all the wars. Let's all be hippies. You're saying that hey throw away all the wars but then you say oh yeah well there are some wars to be fought yeah duh we know that too there are some wars to be fought and that's why we fight those wars so world is not perfect there will there are humans no one is going to live by your one philosophy and no one is going to buy any of that so so we know that these things will keep happening historically another fact for you historically even though 20th century had the first and second world war which were the bloodiest in the human history ever there were the least amount of wars, conflicts in the in the past six hundred years. So you know, and we are going towards less wars as well. So and and, and this so far, this first twenty years are comparatively very peaceful from the last five hundred years. That's just another fact. Okay, you mean that in this uh, system we are living? Okay, while we are living in this system, in the future people uh, will not uh, try to become rich by drug. They will not become rich by trying not to become rich by selling. They will. Weapons. They will. They will. They will. Yes, as long as yes, as long as this system exists, people will do that. Okay, because there is an opportunity. You give them the opportunity to become billionaires. Okay, so we have to remove this system so that they cannot become billionaires by selling weapons, by selling drugs. Okay. Farmers of Afghanistan cannot sell drugs, become richer. They can just produce uh, potatoes and tomatoes instead. Okay? Sir, the, this is the uh, world we live in. We know that these problems exist. I know you. So, so your so your point is, Quran says, "Hey, don't produce, um, don't don't produce drugs." But ev- no, no, that's no. what every every government says the same thing. Don't produce no, drugs. We're it, trying to fight it. There will always no. be bad people who will be doing this. No, Mr. Harris, your Mr. Harris, to say. 
don't do that is one thing and to try to remove the source is another thing okay no well, Anna, you think you think the governments have not tried then they killed pablo escobar do you do you think us hasn't had the war on drugs since the ronald reagan time they've been doing it for so long and it's been backfiring because there is no way you can't really do it that way unless the south american mr. governments do something mr harris i think that i have to you know explain again for you I gave you that example of the, the grocery, okay? Two pictures. In one picture, I stole from your store. Why? Because money, I didn't have money. In the second picture, I didn't steal because money didn't exist. So the solution, Mr. Harris, it's a bad hard. analogy. You, how would the you steal? Uh, money didn't exist, you didn't steal. So how would you, so how would you get it from my store? Yes, it's free, Mr. Harris. You leave. How can you make something free? Because God says that you have to live in such a world, Mr. Harris. Oh my God! No, it doesn't. Where does Quran say that? Throw away the money system, and you know where? Where does where does the Quran say that? So, so because because Mr. Harris, because you and the, um, many uh, you know extremist Muslims don't understand it. It doesn't mean that it doesn't say. Okay. Just yeah, because it's in your mind, you've come up with a new idea, which is a totally no, no, no. impractical one. Okay. Because if you write, how about, sir, how about you write a paper where everything is free? You, you, you know, they're far brilliant. Stop being so arrogant with yourself. I'm not arrogant about that. There's so many brilliant people who have been trying to work out an economic system that is feasible, but they've failed. If you submit your paperwork, and maybe you might get a Nobel Prize in economics, where you've managed to create everything that's free, it cannot happen. We Karl Marx, I don't know if you've read Das Kapital, if you read that, okay, so you understand that how he tries to make a society where everyone is equal and it just doesn't work. Okay. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Now, you said that where in Quran says that, okay, <clears throat> we stand towards Mecca and say, show me the right way, okay, every time, every day. Just because you don't understand and billions of Muslims don't understand, over a billion Muslims don't understand, it doesn't mean that it is not, okay? No one and understands. Okay. What you're saying, nobody understands. Yeah. Why Why we go to Mecca, okay, and dress uh, those uh, two uh, white clothes? Why we do that? Can you can you explain? No, me? I don't know. No, I don't, you know. don't know. So when you don't know, Mr. Harris, when you don't know, you don't have to say that you know. I don't yeah, say I don't know everything. Yeah, I don't yeah. say I know everything. Yeah, let me tell you. I don't let know. I don't know everything. So yeah, let me tell you exactly. That two cloth has to be the material is decided. It has to be cotton, okay, and the, the same color. When you go there, there is no rich, no poor, okay. And we stand oh, towards, and we stand towards there five times a day. Say, show me the right way. I showed you the wrong way, Mister Harris. The wrong way is the capitalist system where one percent of the world population own fifty percent of the total capital of the planet, which is one hundred ten trillion dollars, and billions of people so live on one dollar a day. You show, what you're yourself. showing me the alternative. Say so what the, the alternative the, that you're showing me is even worse. The alternative is equality. The yeah. alternative is to get rid of this satanic yeah. system. Okay. Yeah, warm and fuzzy. Is to get rid of this satanic system and live live like a human being, Mr. Harris. Well, Quran, it's a woman. Uh, it's a war. It's a woman. Teach, no, it doesn't. Quran, no, it's a, Mr. Quran Harris, doesn't Quran, teach anything. Quran came to teach you to live like a human being, like yeah, like right. Cut off hands and feet. Like a smart animal. Yeah, okay. cut off hands and feet. That's what Quran teaches us. Quran has no dissertation on the economic system, how the economy. Show me the right way. Uh, right way is a subjective term. I can say I've got the right way, and now you're saying no billions of Muslims okay. don't understand. The whole world, the capitalist world, doesn't understand. The okay. smartest people can't understand. But Mustafa, so you understand. You found a world. No. You found a world where you've created a world where you know you can just create everything free. Congratulations, you said, you said, Nobel Prize. You said that you, you said that you can show me the right way. Show me the right way. No, I know that this is the world. This is the right way. This is the only way that we come up with so far. And it improves slowly and slowly. I've given you the historical data, 50% reduction in the po poverty line. We are living longer. We're living better. We're not there yet. I would love to live in a world where everyone, nobody dies, no child dies of hunger. All, all of us have nice warm uh, roofs over our head, warm houses. I would love to live in that world, but we are getting towards that, but it's, that's, it's just not going to happen. But, but 
It's definitely not going to happen by saying, it's definitely not going to happen by saying, no, it's definitely not going to happen by looking at a rock and saying, show me the right way. You're literally talking to a wall. Are you looking at the wall and saying, show me the right way? And somehow someone is going to magically show you the right way and, and solve the problem? No. So this is a very loony talk, unfortunately. I mean, look, I mean, I let the let the viewers decide what they think. But unfortunately, this is, I mean, look at the wall and say, show me the right way. And I got it. I got the right way. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense by any, by any standard. And, and you say Satan, Satan is causing all the problems. Tsunamis are caused by Satan, you know. But, I mean, anyway, that's a different topic altogether. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I think we I have to wrap up. Tsunami, uh, Satan made uh, create uh, the the Satan uh, the tsunami, uh, Mr. Harris. Satan create in reality, as I told you, Satan is the system. Satan, Satan is no, not, a, not is not a uh, creature. Is not a is not a, that uh, that was a symbol. Okay. I'm Satan just saying is, it. Just playing with words. I would Satan say Muhammad was a Satan. Sorry? I would I would say Muhammad was a Satan. I mean that doesn't mean anything. Potato potato, okay, like you can call okay, anything, yeah. you can call anything anything you want. Satan is a is an imaginary character. And if if I if I do something good to someone, you say, Oh, God filled his heart with mercy. And if I if I go and stab someone, you'll be like, Oh, Satan did it. You know, so this is just a circular yeah, logic, Mr. circular Harris. reasoning. Mr. There's Mr. no, no Mr. evidence behind any of that. Mr. Harris, you said uh, Muhammad was Satan. Uh, let me see. Uh, no, no, I'm saying it could be. I'm saying no, I could let, say that. Let me see, Mr. Harris. You are very, very, uh, you know, unfair because at the time of Muhammad, when he came, uh, Hindu, uh, sorry, the, the pagans there, they were burying their daughters alive, okay? So how come a Satan came and... It's a lie. It's a lie. Saved, it's a lie. How, how did Khadija survive? How did okay. Muhammad's mother survive? Right. There, okay. there, there okay. might have been one or two instances. But what we have, we have evidence of women who were successful, who were successful business women at the time of Muhammad. We, we, we actually have the record of that. So, you know, this is another lie that is concocted. And because, because it, made, it made you feel good, that's why you are happy to take those riots that, okay. they, that they, were, I, they, that they were bearing can children. I explain, can I explain something, Mr. Harris? You have Google front of you, okay? Check how many girls have been killed in India for the past 20 years. I Google it, 10 million people, the girls, have been killed in India before or after birth, okay? Listen to me, Mr. Harris. Not even one of them are Muslim, okay? Nothing to Hindus, do with Islam. Hindus, even today, they are burying their daughters alive in India because no, they're of the shame of their daughters. They're not burying them alive. So, they're not burying sorry? them alive. They're not sorry? burying them alive. They're not burying them alive. They, what, they, what there has been, there's been a case of selection where people choose the gender of their baby, and that's what happened in China as well. Mr. Mr. And then they've been aborting. They've been aborting. They've been aborting where, where, um, where some people find out okay, it's a daughter instead of a boy, but they're Mr. not Harris. burying them alive. Mr. Harris, Mr. Harris, I, uh, if you send me the video, okay, please. Uh, are you recording this? Are you recording yeah, yeah, I, I, it's going live. It's going live on the channel. The people so watch. I will get. I get. I will get this video later. How? How can it I would be on my channel. channel. Sorry, I can. It, I will can be, it will be. on my channel. Okay, and I will put all evidence in the middle of because I'm director as well. Okay, I will edit it. I will put all this. That's video. Fine. Look, that doesn't prove anything. So even if it's true, let me. I I don't know about that. But even if it's true, that's got nothing to do with Islam and the claim that Arabs are burying their daughters alive. Well, in India, a couple in Uttar Pradesh has found a newborn baby girl buried alive in a grave. Police are searching for the parents. More on this report. Pooja and her husband were digging a grave for their deceased daughter when their spade hit an earthen pot. What they found shocked them, a living baby girl crying inside. According to a government survey released in July, the number of girls is dwindling in India. Boys are preferred over girls because of employment prospects and patriarchal social norms. Police suspect that the burial of the discovered baby happened with the parents' consent. British medical journal The Lancet found that up to 12 million girls had been aborted in India over the last three decades.
ఎవరు ఇక్కడ పిల్లల దావకానికి తెలుసు బాగా చూపెట్టు ఆధార్ కార్డు అరే బాగా చూపెట్టు పాప చనిపోయి తీసుకెళ్ళిపోమని చెప్పి అని చెప్పి And even if they were doing it, even if they were doing it, I can turn it around. I can turn it around. So Muhammad said, stop burying your daughter because when they grow up, I want to marry them all. Okay. You know, I can make up anything I want. Mr. Harris, you can claim whatever you want. Your claims are empty uh, without any facts. I gave you facts. And uh, he, Prophet Muhammad, who is born and saved millions of girls throughout history. And all these millions of girls who have been killed in India none of them are muslims and he just lived uh, 23 years after his uh, messages so he couldn't uh, marry uh, millions of girls for himself so your words are very childish mr harris uh, i will tell you another thing okay uh, even in 21st century in sweden still women are fighting for equal rights okay in the past uh, 100 years ago even 100 years ago women didn't get uh, even 1% uh, inheritance okay but 1400 years ago women got 50% of all rights in many cases equal rights in uh, arabia while in everywhere on this planet women were not even human being okay the For statement example, is worth half the statement is worth half a bed of a man it might have been okay by the standards of the time okay it might have been okay by the standards of the time i've said it before but is definitely not okay by the standards of today yes and today no, woman no, is definitely no, 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 far better no. than the than the woman islam get, no, no, because no, no. today a, a daughter can get 50% not one fourth no listen to me mr harris i didn't say that it is okay for with the standard of uh, standard of today no i said 1400 years ago okay that was all he could do okay with arabs who didn't believe that a woman is a human being okay is a slave and cannot own anything not only arabs everywhere on this planet in india even today one of women's god is husband do you know that one of their god is her, their husband god their husband is their god in japan a woman a, a husband could behead his wife yeah, you know, this is an old argument this argument might have worked in the early part of the 19th century or maybe early part of the 20th century it doesn't work today so what so what if you If you give someone I I can say well okay why didn't you why didn't you uh, end slavery Abraham Lincoln was better than Muhammad you know Abraham Lincoln all got killed for it he fought a war um, he went uh, in a civil war destroyed his half of his country because he stood by a principle that okay no human should own another human but your Muhammad said you know what it's okay and maybe you can have some concubines as well look that we can we can go in another argument okay we can go in another tangent but you know i think we should leave it at that point only where the solution to the world's problem in your case was look at the wall and say show me the right way that's what we say and that's why we still not getting it so i think if we solve the world's problems like that by talking to a wall and say show us the problem and and and, and Well, you said that you eat in the Sirat al-Mustaqim. You say that, you know, you look at the wall. You, you said that you look at the Kaaba. You said that. You said that. You said you look at the Kaaba, we say that. No. Who said? I said, I said, we stand towards those white dress, okay? The equal dress. 
and ask God to show us the way, the right way. Yeah. And yeah. he has shown us 1400 years ago, and we haven't yeah. understood, no one has understood it, that the right way, the right way is equality, no Mr. Mr. Harris. Yeah. Saying equality, is, there's no equality in Islam. Just saying the proper nice, nice warm fuzzy words, using those words doesn't make it true. When anyone who reads the Quran, there is no equality in the Quran, whether you're a human, whether yes. you're a man or a woman, whether you're a slave, there's no equality in, in Islam. So, and the best example you say, oh, I didn't say today's standards. Yeah, but the standards up until 100 years ago. Yeah, okay, all right, you win the first 1300 years of women's rights, you'll win the title, but hang on, we've moved past that. We made a better world for women today, and there's no way that Islam is even in the picture as far as women's rights are concerned. Maybe 200 years ago, it was okay, all right women uh, property in only in the case of property rights uh, i don't know I, I would say you you like to do your research I'd, I'd say look up etruscan women etruscan women in antiquity had equal rights far better than any other civilization at that time so look it up um, but again that civilization didn't survive because it was overtaken by the romans anyway so uh, i think as you said again god uh, you've been you've been talking to god for so long show us the right way and he's and we still haven't understood it you know that says a lot about the religion and about a lot about the callous of your god that he doesn't even show you the right way he showed it 1400 years ago and now he's like this no i showed it to you you don't understand screw you my writing was wonderful i wrote everything in the quran you are not understanding it i'm not going to solve you so anyway you have the last word i got to wrap it up so it, because 1400 years ago, people didn't understand it. It doesn't mean that we don't have to understand it even today. For 1400 years ago, it was too early, okay? God waited billions of years for us. Even today is too early because people like you even don't understand it today. For you, is uh, even you are living in 21st century. I give you so many beautiful example and you for you is, uh, wow, no, it is impossible. How could it be possible for people of 1400 years ago and he tell them right away that live equally? No. Because you're not making any sense. Yes. That's, why, yes. that's why no one's understanding it. I'm yes. giving you, everything. you've given yes. me beautiful yes. words. Yes. You've given me beautiful words. I've given you facts, hardcore facts. Our lifespan has gone up. Our, our lifestyle has gone up. Poverty has gone down by 50%. Yes. I've given yes. you hard facts by people you said they don't understand anything. Right. So if, if not understanding is making our lives better, I'm happy to not understand. Yes. But uh, you say you, you, you said yourself as well that we will never get rid of all those problems as long as we are living in this system. Yeah, you one, two, yeah. No, no, in every system, no, in every system, there would be problems. You know, in communist Russia, where there was strict law and order, there were very harsh punishments. There were still gangs there as well. There were still criminals as well. Yeah, in North Korea, people say crime is next to zero because people are shit scared of doing anything. You know what? I would, I would, I would rather live in a free society and run the risk of getting mugged in the street than live in a society where I'm too afraid to go anywhere. You know, I'll give you the word a solution to the to the rape problem. Never let any woman leave the house. You would never get raped. There's a solution. There you go. So I think you don't understand the balance between freedom and security. Freedom and security is a, are two different things. So when you tighten up, heighten the security too much, your freedoms go down. When you give freedom too much, then your security goes down. So that's why it's all, the Western world is all about that balance. And I'm, and, I, and, and I'm okay with that. I don't want to live in a 100% security state. No, North but, Korea. Yeah, yeah, or Saudi yeah. Arabia. But you're, you're wrong about uh, that keep all women at home. Then uh, they will rape men. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they don't find a woman outside, then they will rape a man. Okay, so anyway, yeah, true. That's true. That's true. That's so, true. Uh, and uh, but, uh, as it happens, yes, uh, uh, and you're right you about said, something. You you <laughs> said about you said about Russia. Okay, uh, I don't know if you have read uh, Marxism. Um, the the base of Marxism is uh, direct direct democracy. Okay which you don't find it in any Marxist country on this planet. Direct democracy, they are just dictatorship. They, you know, the, in, in Marxism, uh, the, the, the power is to people. People choose their leaders, okay? It is pe people who have the power and they can change their leaders anytime they want because it is direct democracy. But in no communist country on this planet, you have any democracy at all, not even indirect democracy. 
I don't know if you are fam familiar with direct and indirect democracy. Indirect democracy is what we have in the West. But direct democracy doesn't exist anywhere on the planet and this is the best democracy, okay? Because you can change your uh, leaders anytime you want. But that's this um, Marxism uh, democracy that they believe in. But nowhere on this planet, any Marxist countries, they have democracy at all, not even indirect democracy. So you don't have to bring them inside uh, we'll our, our discussion. You don't have all to right. bring them inside our discussion. They are like, you know, you bring uh, these Muslim countries and say that, look, Islam is bad because of them. Okay. They are absolutely uh, don't follow. The no, that's not the argument. We're, no, that's not the argument. We actually say Islam is worse than these Muslim countries. But anyway, look, thank you very much for coming. We're now going in a different tangent, but we talked about the, 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 what is, you know, I actually don't know, but I think it's going to be very interesting one. I, I will put it out separately. Uh, I will upload it probably. It should be uploaded by tomorrow. You can download it and, and you know, uh, you, you can upload it on your mediums as well. I hope you don't misrepresent my views. Um, mm -hmm. But thank you. But thank you very much for coming. I I'm really appreciate it. Person. Okay. I'm no, no that's, that's fine. Thank you. Now, thank you. I'm, thank going you. To, I'm going just to put those uh, facts which I was talking to about. That's fine. Uh, those, those will be irrelevant. If you, if, if you plaster the uh, screen with some facts on Indian infanticide, you know, that, that doesn't solve the actual problem. But anyway, you're, you're free to do whatever you want. That, that's fine. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You too. Bye -bye. All right, folks. Uh, that was Mushtaba. Uh, do check out his Facebook profile. He uh, He's made a documentary film. I, I wanted to check it out, but now I'm not so sure whether I would want to. Uh, but, but look, I mean, with all due respect, he came. And thank you very much for his time. Um,